When should you do no contact with a fearful avoidant? What's the purpose of no contact anyway? And how are you supposed to know when to reach out? I'm going to answer these questions in this video, so definitely stick around. Hi, I'm Katya Morozova, personal and relationship coach for people who are ready to heal their relationship wounds, become secure in their skin, and have healthy connections. I'm also the founder of katyamorozova.me. I'm committed to helping people who have been wronged in their relationships to speak up for themselves and create life and relationships by their own design. If you're new to my channel and you truly wanna address the core of what it takes to have healthy relationships and be your authentic self in them, then definitely subscribe to my channel. I've coached dozens and dozens of people through relationship breakups. And let me tell you, it is one of the most pivotal life stages that a person can go through. It can create the opportunity to grow and learn. It can also be a clearing point for a relationship that has gone south and an opportunity to revisit the connection. I created this video for the anxious preoccupied partner to successfully execute no contact with a fearful avoidant ex. That said, this video can also apply to a range of people who are experiencing a partner who is hot and cold, who keeps leaving the relationship and then coming back or maybe they don't break up with you, but in the relationship, they wax and wane so often that it really is damaging to the relationship and to the connection. This video is for you if you want to draw a hard line, a boundary in your relationship to once and for all, either have a relationship with this person or move on. First, let's talk about when to do no contact with your fearful avoidant ex. The best time to do no contact is when you are in a couple of different places. The first reason is you really want to take the time to consider if this relationship is really right for you and you genuinely need some space. You're tired of the instability and you know that you're worthy of a secure relationship. The second reason to do no contact is when your ex has broken up with you on multiple occasions and historically you have let them come in and out of your life and you are finally at a place where you're at a breaking point. You're fed up and you want to let them know that this kind of behavior will not work moving forward. Next, let's talk about the purpose of no contact. Look, I'm at a level with you for a second. Most of the time, no contact is taught in manipulative and unhealthy ways. It's taught as a method to bait your ex to come back to you. Now, I want you to consider that for a second. What does it say about your relationship if you have to bait your ex to come back? What does it say about your partner if you have to bait them to get them to come back to you? These could be some extremely powerful and potentially painful questions to answer, but I think answering them could be a game changer for you if you are in this space. So what is no contact really for then? No contact is really for you. It's for you to set a boundary. It's for you to communicate to yourself that you're not going to let someone come waltzing in and out of your life. The beauty of setting a boundary is that it implicitly communicates to your former partner what you will and will not stand for. It also gives you the space to really consider the long-term potential of your relationship, to clear your head and to settle your emotions. Typically, at the start of no contact, at the start of any breakup, we always want our partner back. This is not novel. It's very rare to just be done with someone, even if they did something that's just awful. The reality is that when we go through a breakup early on, there's so many chemicals being fired off in our brains that are telling us that, it, that it's almost like we have a missing limb by not being with this person. So when you start with no contact, it really gives you the opportunity to emotionally regulate, to let your emotions settle, and to begin to see things a bit more clearly. As well, no contact is a really great strategy, especially for the anxious preoccupied partner, because anxious preoccupied more than any other attachment style are often consumed with their partners during the relationship. 
They focus so much on their partner and they don't worry enough about themselves, their own needs, their own desires in the relationship. No contact provides a space to reconnect with that, to what you really, really, truly want in your connection. It's like a reset button. As well, it gives the relationship time to breathe, especially if things were really heated when it ended. It's a reset button that allows the two parties to clear the space, to heal some of the wounds, to give them some time, and opens up the possibility to reconnect again if it's right. Finally, let's talk about how to know when it's time to reach out again. Reaching out again has more to do with you than it has to do with your ex. Reaching out has to be something that you do on your terms, not on your ex's terms. Here's the thing, fearful avoidance can be impulsive and can act on a whim. If they broke up with you on a whim, then it's very likely that they come back to you on a whim. If you think about this, when a fearful avoidant partner does this, they are acting on their own terms. Now that you are broken up, it's time to act on your terms. Look, I get it, it can be especially difficult if your ex reaches out to you before you're ready. On some level, you've been waiting for them to reach out. You've been waiting for them to confirm that they miss you and that they still care about you. But I want to remind you of what we talked about earlier in this video, which is drawing that line in the sand. This is why it's really important that before you even start no contact, that you have a clear picture about what no contact looks like for you. I recommend that you do no contact for no less than 30 days. A good range is about 30 to 90 days. And I found with most of my clients that a sweet spot is about 60 days. That said, you can't put a timeline on how fast you heal and how long it takes for you to feel centered and grounded again. If after 30 days or 60 days, you have literally just been waiting to reach out to your ex again, then you're kind of missing the point of no contact. You want to end no contact ultimately not on a calendar date, but when you feel like you're grounded, when you're feeling rational, when you're feeling centered, and you have some clarity about the relationship and some curiosity about reconnecting. That is a solid place to reach out from. If you want a comprehensive game plan for no contact with your fearful avoidant ex, then one-on-one -on -one coaching may be a great fit for you. No contact works best when you are working on yourself during the process because there's nothing like reapproaching your ex from a position of strength, power, and clarity. If you'd like to explore a coaching relationship, then definitely check that out in the link in the description below. Finally, I wanted to share my free gift that I made for you to support you in your healing. It's a five-step guide to healing and finding your center again after a breakup. You can check that out as well in the description below. Did you find this video helpful? If you did, definitely give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna watch more videos that support you on your recovery. Now you can watch the next video in my Anxious Avoidant Breakup series. It's gonna be on a thumbnail right up here, so go ahead and click that now, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.